been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, I do apologize for the absence. We are back. We are in Bonita Springs Toys and Games, and we have a lavalier microphone that probably doesn't sound great. I am going to look into a better quality one. I apologize. But for the meantime, it is the setup I need to properly discuss some Transformers I'm excited about, like the newest Dinobot Leader Class figure that a lot of people are excited for, but can't really find anywhere, and that is Dinobot 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 Why am I getting censored? Warning, this video is intended for adult collectors. It contains plastic collectibles, questionable opinions, and the guy that wrote too many of these intros. You have been warned. This is Random Review. Before we begin, thank you very much to Eric R. for contributing to patreon.com forward slash TJ Omega. It is a long overdue thank you, but it is a thank you nonetheless because I appreciate every contribution, even if you're still not contributing anymore. So thank you very much. Now, on with the review because we have a silver triceratops to speak of. And yes, it is Dinobot Slug. My apologies to those in the UK. It's not my fault they named him that way. But today, we are looking at a leader class studio series figure that has hit a lot of uh, a lot of distribution issues. Some people can find it, some can't. I'm pretty sure I'm the only one in Southwest Florida that actually found this on a shelf. However, that does mean I get to talk about the toy and what a toy it is. As we can see, he is a very, very nice rendition of the original Dinobot slug. The original Dinobot Slug, that's still weird to talk about. I apologize if I slip into the other word by mistake. But what we have is a brilliant, bulky Triceratops that lovingly recreates the detail of the original toy while still giving us some aesthetic much closer to the cartoon. I do like the absence of the translucent plastic that we normally see on a Dinobot. I mean, typically, that's a really cool design element. You know, they have all those mechanical details underneath the gold translucent. And, you know, it creates this really deep layered effect that's kind of unique to the Dinobots. But in this case, we've already gotten that. So I'm actually really happy to see something different. This more mimics the look in the cartoon where they are a solid gold color. And I think that's a good change up to separate it out from previous Dinobots. We also have enough tech detail to kind of give us uh, indications of the toy. I'm not like unhappy that they went with a mix between the cartoon aesthetic and the toy aesthetic. In this case, it absolutely works. Beyond that, we see a little bit of red showing through that's mostly gonna be for the robot mode, especially up there at the top. I love this. I love that these silver blocks exist on his back because this is where the feet were on the original toys robot mode. The toys robot mode feet in this figure are down here. They are blending into his tail and basically forming his butt. Up here, yeah, just a fake part to look like the original toy. Kind of a cool touch. Paint wise, we get not only like this just gold everywhere on both sides and the back, but we also get some darker panels to break up the silver and we see that along the side of the leg as well. And yeah, just a bunch of nice tech detail all around. I dig it. So. There's not too many features in this mode. The hips move, you know, all these move, and this is all like transformation element. These are basically his robot mode arms, so they have a nice chunky ratchet to them, a rotation, that backwards knee that I can never remember correct terminology for. It's actually his ankle, if I remember correctly. Brilliant blue. I love the brilliant blue eyes. They shine very, very well. And then the mouth does open and close. And this is actually neat. The roof of the mouth is actually a separate piece to hide where the robot mode head is. That's an extra little detail they didn't really need to do. I kind of expect to just rotate the head around and just pretend it wasn't there, but hey, I like the extra mile. The only thing suspicious here is the tip of the tail, which is suspiciously gray. That is because it is where the weapon storage is. So he also has that going for him as well. Also going for him, uh, you see that three millimeter peg that can fit into your standard display stands. 
Not that you'd ever display him as a flying Triceratops, but it's there as an option. It's your toy, play with it how you will. If a Triceratops flies, that's your business. We also have mounting points around the toy for various weapon additions, if you want to do that, as well as up here on the back. He's got five of them in all. He also has some extra ports here on the shoulders, and you know, we, have to, we have to talk about that now. So the Studio Series Leader Dinobots come with little figure accessories. The, now Wheelie coming with Grimlock, that made sense. This one, uh, not so much because uh, it's Daniel. It's Daniel Witwicky. They put him in because he's so known to be Slug's friend. Yeah, so it's white plastic, a little bit of a little bit of baby blue, a little bit of detail here. Nothing uh, tremendous or groundbreaking. The knees are stuck. These are just solid pieces. The arms don't really have a lot they can do. The stems don't really have any articulation in the shoulders, so it's mostly just the ball joint that's holding it on. Yeah, you can't really do anything with this. It doesn't transform, and of course, it just looks like a bullet head. You can, you can stand him up. You can stand him up in a, like, I, I, like, I am desperately trying not to poop squat. I, mean, it's, it's, I, I know it's crude. It's the only way I can describe it, okay? Again, these things are not my fault. He's molded like that so he can actually sit down on these various ports that are on, uh, on s slug, but they don't fit well. Like, this, there's just so much, like, I have to... I have to side mount him onto that one. And then up here, he's got these long pegs that are supposed to clip into the legs, but I can never quite get it right. Like, like it's just this like, like really awkward straddle. Like, that's what he can do. That's what he can do. So if you want a little dino riders in with your transformers, you can do that. But as you can see, it's... <sighs> The accessories filler guff, you know? I feel like it's gonna take them a couple more years to get all the Dinobots out at leader class size, and they're going to have a budget that is constantly shrinking as it has over the years. I feel like the, fig the figures like Wheelie and Grimlock, like the Wheelie with Grimlock, and now Daniel with Slug, I feel like that's just to fill out the price points so that when newer Dinobots, so like when they get around to like Snarl at leader class size, they can ditch that piece and not have to sacrifice anything from the toy. That way, all five are consistent even if the budget goes down. So I, I think it really is just like budget filler. So this budget filler, we can go and we can ignore it for the rest of the review. It's time to transform, and let's see if I can remember to do this on the first go. All right, so he's got a lot going on here in the tail section, so I wanna see if I can get the tail out first. And then we can get these flaps opened up on the side. We'll go ahead and get those uncovered. They're exposed now, so we'll go ahead and straighten out the legs. And there's a, there's a nice transformation trick to the legs here. So if I go around this side, uh, for starters, we're gonna fold up this part and then raise the gate. The gate allows it to flip in tucks that leg in, close it up, and now you've got a completely hidden dino mode leg. Do it again on the other side, lock it in, and that gives us a clean set of robot mode legs, which we will now rotate around. Very, very nice. The next cool part about the transformation is up here in the chest. If I pop this piece down, we can actually expand the entirety of his torso. It's all double hinged in the back, so we can rotate it out like that. And then we're gonna knock it back into place. From there, all this has to come down. All of this, uh, that all has to go and squish into there to expose the robot mode head. Close that back up, and now the same piece that was holding those parts together are now going to close the gap, which is a trick I like. He has these extra little uh, extraneous Dinobot pieces. You can fold those up or not. It's not really a whole lot to do with them. 
but now oh, we can get the hands out. Hang on, I got mine rotated around. Slight gap. All right. All right. I really shouldn't have cut my thumbnails before I did this. You know what? If you're having trouble getting the hand out, go ahead and take the tail, unplug it, plug that in, raise it up. Quick and easy fix. So now to the back, all of this needs to fold up so that this section can plug into here. Goes up kind of like that. We're going to fold all that up together to make sure it stays out of the way. And that's going to be our slug in robot mode, who is now too big for my frame. But while we, uh, while we go over the frame, while I reframe it, let's talk a little bit about the transformation itself. I do really, really enjoy it. There's a lot going on there that I did not expect, and it fixes a few problems that we've had in the past, like how he's supposed to be this really wide set, bulky character, but he always looks kind of scrawny because they couldn't really do anything to like expand or close the torso in any way. Now they have, and now it works really, really well. It's a very clever little visual trick to change the, the silhouette. So looking at him once again, he is very much done up in the toy styling, or well, very much in the cartoon styling. Red head and all, very, very solid details. Not a whole lot of color change to talk about except for just how much red exploded on his chest. Now he is a pretty bulky figure. Like, that is like a very nice like size leader class figure. This isn't one of your leader class toys with a whole bunch of accessories because it's actually a Voyager toy. No, proper, nice, hefty leader class toy. I will also say he feels nice and solid. I hear people complaining about hollowing out and gap issues. The Dinobots, I seem to see uh, escape that a little bit. Solid in the thighs. The legs, yeah, they did have uh, the hollowed out sections, but that's so they could all fold up. You know, very little done on the arms. Very, you know, the arms for the most part look very solid. I mean, it's a pretty, pretty hefty feeling figure. It doesn't seem like they skipped out too much on the actual design and uh, bulk of the toy itself. Detailing wise, we're looking at mostly the same stuff that we saw in the beast mode. Uh, the new stuff does include that robot mode chest, as well as a nice head. The head itself is, well, it's annoying to film because that solid red is washing out the details and the light. But you can see he's not a happy guy. And you know, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty on character for him. I think that's fine. It is a little bit distracting that the inside of the Dinobot head was not painted as well. It does feel weird to have like that solid gray behind him. I mean, it accents and silhouettes his head fine, but otherwise it's a little bit odd. And yeah, um, he is what you see. He is a brilliant piece of Dinobot engineering with a lot of really cool things going on. Let's take a look at the articulation. We do have a head that is ball jointed, so it can go up and down a little bit. It is on that. It is on that. Uh, is it is on that uh, that piece that's floating a little bit. So he does have a little bit of weirdness in the up and down, but left and right's fine. Shoulders work all the way around. They are universally jointed. And they have that little like fake thing so it doesn't look like they're floating. I love that. Full bicep swivel, 90 degree elbow, and the wrist rotation as seen. We have a waist rotation that was part of the transformation. The hips nicely ratcheted in this forward and back direction. And then display out, no ratchet, but very stiff. So that gives you a lot of, uh, that gives you a lot more position options. Full thigh working. You can actually go beyond the 90 on the knee, thanks to the transformation. And then you have the ankle rock as well, giving you everything you need in a high articulation transformer. And I'm gonna go ahead and equip his weapon to him. Some people see the 86 Dinobots with no swords as being a weakness. Um, so I, I, like, I got news for you. The only one that ever had a sword in the show was Snarl. All the others, they only used guns. So if we're going for cartoon accurate Dinobots, I don't feel like that's much of a loss just because they don't have swords. I know that's their thing. I know swords are their thing with the toys, but hey, they're going for something different here. So let's uh, let them have it. And 
you know, who knows? If Swoop comes out of the leader class, he might just pack in everyone's swords later on. Who knows? But for now, we have what we have. And what we have is a very articulated robot Triceratops that has a lot of really cool features to him. He also has this, this unfortunate thing that can sit on his shoulder now, but can't stand up on his own, obviously. And we've already seen how putting it onto his shoulder doesn't really work out. So that is the long and short of it of Dinobot Slug. Did I get through that whole review without saying the other one? I think I did. Extremely good figure. Really unfortunate the distribution has made this a little bit hard to find, but once he's out, he's going to be worth it, trust me. And yeah, he is a very worthy uh, follow-up to 86 Grimlock. Now, if you'll excuse me, the wait begins for the other three. And me uh, hoping Swoop doesn't turn out to be the short boy of the team, because that's my Dinobot, and I really don't want him coming up short.